So this is Alex. And this is Jody. And yep. we're going to play the Stanley Parable. Found it on Steam. We know it's been a while. <laughs> a long time. Far too long. Have you missed us? Of course I have. I miss me. This is I the certainly story of a you. man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So this is our first time playing this ever. Forever. We played the demo, but that's about it. I would say, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> yes. Hey, didn't you hear the narrator? He said step out of the office. I'm not going to do what that, na what that narrator tells me. I'm not going to do what he says at all. See, you Stanley yourself. simply couldn't handle the pressure. See, you what if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Shit. Nothing will hurt me. Look at that. Nothing will break me. You broke the In game. here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Trying to hide. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond I gotta get out of this office. was that if he waited long enough, my mind. the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. <laughs> Here it comes. The narrator's a dick. <laughs> Thank you for leaving office. I think what All happened was I accidentally uh, closed the door. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Did Stanley say looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> It did. Haunted. What does this one say? I like work. I just hate my boss. <laughs> so we haven't quite figured out what this game is about yet. We... We found it on Steam and we were like, hmm, this is going to be an interesting game to play because the demo was very peculiar. It was entertaining. Very it entertaining. Was entertaining. Stanley went around <laughs> touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. You put your seat. So Jody, what would you do if you were in an office setting like this, and then all of a sudden, like this kind of situation happened to you? What would you do? Uh. When Stanley came to a set of two open sure. doors, oh he entered the door <laughs> on his left. 
<laughs> There's a video of this part online that me and Alex watched. So you're gonna go into the door on your left? No, don't do it. Go into the one on the right. Just this was one. not the correct way to the meeting room, <laughs> and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <laughs> Suck it, narrator. We do what we want. You don't own me. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Hey, didn't you just say drink? You are not drinking anything. I, I, you see me trying yes. to pick shit up and drink. Really, really worth it being here in the room. <laughs> A room so utterly captivating that even though all but eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. Don't do it. Don't listen to him. He's trying to control your life. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> God, what a, what a smart ass. This narrator dude, I don't know how I feel about him. And most of these doors are closing by themselves. What's that door? Nothing. Oh, wow. <coughs> <laughs> Do not jump from cargo lift while in <laughs> It will cause death. Only <laughs> for misuse cargo lift. That was not it. Don't know if you're jumping off the cargo lift. That was not <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley left from the platform and plunged to his death. <laughs> Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> oh, you gotta go through it all again. <laughs> Screw this narrator. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Aw, oh, how sweet. Your wife loves you. That's not my Or maybe desk. it's her husband. Maybe maybe she's pretty but off. That's not my desk. I'm 427. Not 434. That's creepy. What are you going to do with your life now? Mm hmm. 420. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Should I take the left door? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Are you gonna do it? You're boring. I like defying the own narrator. It's funner. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> How does someone disappear with the coworker? I have often said you. Have passive aggressively on other coworkers. There's no coworkers for not supporting me more. <laughs> <laughs> Are you changing it by clicking? No. Oh. Using such an arm, make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on. Everyone is unique, you most of all. This game is awe inspiring. <laughs> wait, wait, let's remember if slides on the slide. Charts. Charts and slides. Slides. <laughs> <laughs> right, which charts on the same slide to pick the same information. Okay, now that's starting to get complicated. Yeah. Thing. Money. More money. Oh, uh, yeah, we're not going to sit here and read all that. Alright, let's go. Oh. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, 
Why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my coworkers <laughs> blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley ah! pondered this, ah. he began to make other strange Bitch. observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh. <laughs> the doors close automatically behind him wherever he went. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply <laughs> repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. I'm dreaming. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, what? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. What it was is so going much on? Fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Oh, How beautiful. was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Why, <laughs> Moody thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these I wonder words, if this is like, uh, like kind of like a punishment After for not all, following the story. He knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Wake up. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. But you're not okay. <laughs> Wrong. You're not okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Jesus. This game's pretty intense. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then <laughs> collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. 
and in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. <laughs> I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> well, and now you're going to start back in the office.